Greetings and welcome to this online worship service. In the previous sermon, we looked at the story of Gideon and how God's will manifested itself in the life of the Israelites. We also looked at this really big question about what is God's will for our lives? What is the purpose of life? And I use this very simple but insightful definition from uh, Pastor Louis Giglio, who said that God's will for our lives is for us to live in freedom and in victory in every area of our lives for the glory of Christ. Now, today, I want us to look at one of the biggest stumbling blocks to our freedom that God has designed for us. Now, when we talk about personal challenges and issues that could you know, rob us of the freedom God planned for us, you know, there are so many big ones that come up, like uh, addictions, that's a ma major one, or uh, unforgiveness, which is an underrated but pretty main one. But quite often, it's not the big things that trip us up. It's actually the subtle things, like comfort. I know that uh, the topic of comfort is kind of controversial because on one hand, we all kind of aim for it. I mean, whether we admit this or not, but we also kind of know that it shouldn't be the driving force behind every decision we make. We all kind of want it, but we also know that it shouldn't be the above and beyond goal for our lives. Comfort isn't bad. It's important for me to say that. Comfort can be a good thing. It's actually a part of God's will for us, you know, along with peace and happiness and many, many other blessings. But comfort can become uh, very destructive when we allow it to influence our decisions, when we allow it to make the decisions for us. For example, when I was little, no one had to teach me to want to have comfort in life. I just sort of grew up and I knew that. I never had to learn to want to be comfortable in life. I mean, it, it was like swallowing. I just knew how to do it. Even when I was a young boy, you know, I tried to sell chores to my sister as a fun activity so she would also do mine. She never bought it. But the point is that when I started my walk with God, I had to unlearn that pattern. I had to unlearn that habit. So while I don't really remember or I never had to learn to want to have comfort in life, I really remember having to and still, you know, learning to uh, follow God even when it isn't comfortable. So think about it. Have you ever found yourself, you know, wondering what it would be like to have so much uh, wealth that you don't have to be worried anymore? Have you ever wished to have so much resources, so much contingency that no hardship could ever affect you, that no economic downturn could ever impact you? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have so much of everything? You don't have to fear anything. Now, I'll tell you that these are kind of loaded questions because they all have this assumption that uh, our stuff can protect us. And that isn't actually true. I mean, in a limited way, yes, you know, if when you lose your job, but you have savings, you know, that can help you navigate uh, unemployment. But let me ask you this. Can you really have so much wealth that nothing bad could ever happen to you? Of course not, right? Can you really have so many resources, so much contingency, so much savings and so on? that no hardship could ever affect you or impact you? Of course not. And we know that. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, well then, how do we know what kind of comfort we have? Do we have the bad kind that is actually robbing us of the freedom we are supposed to have? Or do we have the good kind that is actually part 
of God's will that is a part of God's freedom for us well think about the following examples and see honestly how much they apply the first example is when you have a decision to make between right and wrong and the number one factor you know when you look at that is thinking about which of these decisions is going to be the least uncomfortable for me because that is, if, if that is the approach then yes that is the bad type of comfort the other example is this expectation from God that yes God I'm going to follow you I'm going to believe in you but as long as you don't ask big sacrifices for me as long as you don't ask me to make these big sacrifices because then you are going to make this relationship uncomfortable of course it doesn't work like that the other example is when we say to God listen God I'll follow you, I'll obey you, you know, I'll worship you, I even give the tithe, go to church and be happy. I will give you this and this and this and this, as long as you don't ask for that and that and that and that. It's kind of like a negotiation with God. And again, our relationship with God really doesn't work like that. The last example, perhaps the most ex important example, is when we tolerate sin in our lives. When we tolerate something that we know it is wrong we know we should just deal with it we know we should just face it head on and fix it but we become too complacent in our comfort and we let it linger around like a bad smell so today I want us to look at uh, the book of Judges chapter 6 verse 1 to 6 and look at a story, a specific event, and how the nation of Israel had to face a very similar issue about comfort. So, verse 1. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of the Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves, in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Malachites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. So in this reading, the Israelites turned away from God and as a result of their uh, disobedience God's protective presence sort of withdrew from the nation because the nation of Israel turned away from God as a consequence to that uh, God's presence sort of disappeared and as a result another nation was able to conquer them and invade them now in an interesting way this story actually talks about comfort because when the Midianites attacked and conquered Israel and established a new norm that from here on out we are going to come back every year taking the harvest taking the, all the resources all the livestock everything the Israelites actually had a choice you know, are we going to you know let them keep coming back or are we just going to you know try to do our best to survive and hide in forts and caves and as it turns out it was much more comfortable to survive and hide in caves than to face this impossible enemy it was much more comfortable to hide than to face reality and cry out to God for help now regardless of that after seven years the Israelites have had enough they actually cried out to God for help for deliverance now there's if there's one thing that's true about God is that 
he is always ready he's always willing to listen when we approach him with a genuine apology I'm telling you if we ever figure out that that God has a second name I already know what it is God the God of second chances sometimes it feels like the entire Bible is nothing about but God giving us another and another and another chance but let me ask you this if you had a choice how long would you tolerate occupation how long would you tolerate or how long could you handle oppression can you go for an entire day or an entire week or month or even year well think about this how different would this story have uh, looked like had the Israelites not been led by their comfort to survive and to face this enemy and to turn to God immediately not seven years later this entire invasion could have been over in a matter of weeks or months who knows but the point is God listened God listened to the cries of his people and he decided to use an instrument to save now that person as we're going to look at it turns out to be Gideon verse 11 the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon he said the Lord is with you mighty warrior now sometimes all we need to really understand a passage is to imagine it so imagine this encounter you know Gideon threshing wheat in a wine press and then an angel showing up and basically approaching Gideon with this statement the God is with you mighty warrior I'm sure there was a split second in Gideon's mind where he was thinking are you sure you have the address right or isn't there like a like is there like an actual warrior behind me also in the wine press because I doubt you're talking about me and yet this encounter in itself you know describes this very interesting nature of God where he did not treat Gideon based on the person he was but based on the person he was going to be the savior the deliverer of Israel now that same thing you know God looks at us the same way God doesn't look at us as the people we are God looks at us at all of us as the amazing daughters and sons of God we can be through Christ and that is so so powerful verse 13 pardon me my Lord Gideon replied but if the Lord is with us why has all this happened to us where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian the Lord turned to him and said now at this point we really don't know what how this happened because this conversation actually begun with the angel and now it looks like you know God is speaking directly to Gideon so God said go go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand am I not sending you now this statement gives us a really interesting insight into the nature of callings that we receive from God you see Gideon received this calling to go and save Israel now by the way this plan this mission would have been impossible for a united Israel with a healthy army so how much more impossible is it for a single guy but then God goes on to ask this question that is so insightful am I not sending you this is what it means that when God gives us something to do he also gives us the opportunity to tap into his infinite strength and to do it 
It means that when God is giving us a calling, He also empowers us to turn to Him for strength and for ability to surpass our own limitations. Of course, Gideon did not understand it. Verse 15, Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. So here basically God just repeated it himself. He repeated himself and said that, listen Gideon, my strength is so much bigger than your weakness. My power is so much greater than your worry or your inability. So this is another example of comfort actually, but the right way. You see, Gideon had a choice. On one hand, he could have chosen to just, you know, stay small, just keep hiding, you know, just try to save food wherever he could. On the other hand, he also had a chance to follow God. Now, of course, it's easy to see which one is more comfortable. Taking on the impossible task of, you know, becoming a one-person army to invade to attack an enemy that is almost literally countless, is really, really uncomfortable. And yet, Gideon followed God. So, the example here is that godly victories require us to have a type of holy discomfort. That is what we need as we follow God. That is the kind of attitude we need for us to have the types of freedom and victories God designed for us. So, we need holy discomfort. Now, the frightful alternative is that we can actually miss out on the victories God planned for us. We can actually miss out on the freedom God imagined for us. I don't know about you, but to me, this could be perhaps the scariest reality of it all. I mean, think about it. You know, God ever saying, but my child, I had so much more in mind for you than what you have settled for. But what I imagined for you was so much bigger, was so much more amazing than what you had made due to your comfort. Sounds like a really, really scary idea. So, verse 36. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. But this time, make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. Now, this is one of those really, you know, shocking parts of this entire reading because at first glance, you know, we look at it and we say, this is exactly, you know, how it looks like to test God, but testing God is wrong. And actually, this is not what it is about. So, to summarize what happened so far, you know, I think we all kind of agree that nothing in life comes to us without an effort. I think we can almost say that that's like a universally accepted statement. Now, that this same thing is true. It's especially true when it comes to the freedom God imagined for you. It's especially true when it's, we talk about the victories God designed for you. Now, holy discomfort or, you know, walking 
with God in holy discomfort is not really about you know doing something really difficult and then asking God to bless it it's more about us shifting our focus to God's glory over our desire for comfort or over our desire for safety so it's actually not us you know fighting for all that matters it's actually Christ fighting through us and there is great great relief in knowing that what do I mean by that well in this last reading what Gideon basically did is that he told God listen God if if you really are going to to save the nation by my hands then then help me I mean reassure me listen I will put this piece of wool on the threshing floor and you know make it really moist because of precipitation but make the ground really dry which is impossible you know it's either one or the other and if that happens that's like supernatural and I know you mean it it's and it happened and then go and then Gideon takes it a step further and says okay God don't be angry but if you are really really gonna help me then please do it again but now reversed and God did it now listen this entire sermon is not about us you know walking out of our comfort zone I was actually careful never to use that that expression this entire sermon isn't about that I'm sure that's a good advice in some situations this is not the point you know, the purpose of this message or the meaning of this message is more about following God out of our own comfort zones and once we left our own once our own comfort zone is so far away we can barely see it learning it that there is another comfort zone around God and we get to rest in that we get to dwell in that and that is what Gideon was doing here basically Gideon was saying listen God I know what I'm supposed to do I know what you told me to do but it's awful difficult help me reassure me lift me up please and guess what for those kind of requests God is all too happy to answer that is why I said you know there is great relief in knowing that and this same truth it, it is true for all of us we can apply it yes when there is something we know we should do but we are too comfortable we have this chance we have this privilege to turn to God and say listen God I know I should deal with this I know I should fix this I know I should you know just just face this head-on but help me because I'm too comfortable help me because it feels too big help me be victorious just like Gideon did and guess what God answers so in conclusion the work we are to do is really by Christ for the glory of God and guess what we get to be a part of that so ultimately our freedom and our victories will glorify God in Jesus name Amen Heavenly Father thank you for this day and thank you for this time of worship it is easy to talk about following you but it is so much harder to actually do it father we thank you for your words and we thank you for your guidance teach us to follow you not just when it is easy not just when it is comfortable but especially when it is about following without knowing where we are going Heavenly Father help us to take that leap of faith wherever you may lead us so we may live in freedom so we may have victories and above all help us to remember and to rest in the truth that it is not us fighting it is not us making things happen but it's actually Christ working in us Heavenly Father guide us so that our lives 
may be an act of worship, so that we may have a life of freedom that you have imagined, that you have dis designed when you have created us. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.